What's up, you? <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> What's up, YouTube? My name's Quickie. Welcome back to the channel. Um, I'm doing it. I'm doing a gearbox. <laughs> Loads of people is chipping in. It's the right thing to do. Just stop faffing about and get on with it. So that's what I'm doing. Um, so to set the scene, right? The van went in for its MOT on Friday. It failed, so I can't drive that. There's stuff that needs doing. Um, biggest jobs on it is one of the shocks on the front is started to leak and the McPherson strut at the top of that shock, that needs to be replaced. But then other, there's a few other bits and pieces like, well, your yellow indicator bulb isn't quite yellow enough. So I need another one of them. And the horn worked twice out of the three times that we pressed it. So there's obviously like a dodgy connection there or something. They are quite strict on the MOTs where I go, but I quite like that. So anyway, the van is off the road, which means the bike has to get done. Mostly because I want the bike done. <laughs> but at the minute, I'm I'm not mobile. Sam had to drop me down here today and she's leaving me here till tea time, which is great because I'll get a couple of hours extra. Um, so, I'm doing a gearbox. Um, so to set the scene, um, there's, what are the symptoms? These are notorious for having troubles with second gear, as in you go into second gear and it jumps out, or you just can't select it properly or something like that. That's not the trouble I've got with this, the trouble I've got is fifth. So when you, you're hoofing along and you're in fourth and then you go to get a fifth and as you let the clutch out, um, it kind of, it jerks and it judders like that. And then it's almost like, if you can imagine you've got um, uh, a tooth gear and a tooth is missing, like it's, it's, it's slipping past that point and it's kind of catching and jerking. Or if like you get it, sometimes like you let the clutch out and it kind of jerks and then it just revs. So it's almost like the gears aren't engaging at all. And even if it does catch, it kind of lurches and jumps out. And then with the revs, there is no power being delivered to the back wheel. So that's a symptom that I've got. Um, it only happens in fifth gear. All the other gears are absolutely fine. Shifting between gears, not a problem at all. Um, I've never hit a false neutral. It's just fifth gear. Um, so that's what I'm trying to fix. Now, this is a C model from 1990. So this is basically the first, first version of the bike. Um, and it ran the same from 90 to 93 um with the same gearbox and then for the d they changed it so they went oh yeah we've probably got to fix something there <laughs> so they actually redesigned um the gearbox and apparently it's a much more robust um gearbox you don't have the same sort of issues and you can take the the d gearbox and stick it in the c engine which is what i wanted to do but i couldn't find one <laughs> i couldn't find one the, the gears on this is just stupidly expensive and a lot of them aren't made anymore. So just the, if you look at Fowler's, for example, just the input shaft gear for fifth, that's 150 quid. Just that gear. <laughs> if you was to buy all the bits to make your own gearbox, you could just buy a whole new bike. That's how pricey some of this stuff. So I ain't gone new. Um, I've basically gone for a second hand, low mileage, in good condition, perfectly usable setup. And I've got a complete gearbox coming. So, you know, selector forks, the, um, the selector drum, the input and output shafts with all the gears on, and it's for a C. Um, if I was to stick a D one in, the, in, the, sorry, the output shaft is 30 mil different in length. So you would have to, and I believe it's, it's longer, -er, I think it's either longer or shorter. One of them runs like a, a flat um, front sprocket. The other one is dished um, purely because the output shaft is 30 mil shorter. So if you were to swap over the gearbox from a C to a D, you would need to use the D front sprocket. But apart from that, apparently it just drops in. Um, but you know, I can't do that because I ain't got one. I've got one of the other ones coming. <laughs> right. So that's, that's kind of where we are. Um, that should be here on Monday. Um, so I'm pinching Sam's car Monday and Tuesday, <laughs> and I'm basically gonna get everything done that I can. Um, I've got everything to do the forks and blah, 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 blah. So depending how far we get with this, if I'm still waiting on bits, I'm just gonna get the forks done. 
yeah, I'll need to bike back on the road basically. So, how have I got the thing set up? Let me, um, I've got on my phone, I've got the workshop manual. I haven't got it on here, I should have put it on here. Uh, and I've got uh, my tablet just so I can take loads of pictures as I'm doing stuff because I haven't done this before. Um, I'm a little bit, you know, worried about doing it, I suppose. Um, just because I haven't done it before. But looking at the manual, it doesn't actually seem that hard. Um, so I've got this for taking loads of pictures and each you, you'll probably see me just stop and take a snap or, you know, whatever. Um, and I've also got the Haynes Book of Fairy Tales. And between the two, I should be able to get this done, I think. So we might as well start happy snapping now and I'll cover absolutely as much of this as I possibly can do just because it might help someone. There is bugger all videos out there. No, I don't want to install you. No, go away. Um, there is bugger all videos out there about, um, about ZZRs, basically. The only stuff I can really find is stuff like, don't mind the exhaust, sound lovely. <laughs> and here's me ragging the nuts off it. Um, so I figured doing all this sort of stuff is going to help. So, um, Hopefully this works. Right. The first of many, I'm sure. <coughs> so the way I've got this set up is basically if you tip the end, we took the engine out, shoved it on here, and it's just sitting on its back end. So there's two, I'll get the picture and shove it up, because otherwise why did I take the picture? But I've got the whole thing sitting on the rear engine mounts and there is nothing else touching down at all on the back there, which is peachy. Um, it does get a little bit close, but it's not touching. <laughs> and I can rock the whole engine back, you know, to a point anyway, without um, without causing any damage. So that's handy. So that's how it's all set up, and that's how I'm going to be working on it. I'm working on wood. Um, ideally, I would have, like, you know, with the sump on, I just would have cleaned the bejesus out the bottom of it to stop anything getting in there, but I didn't. So we are going to have to go careful. Right, step one. Ah, gear change components. Okay, so on all models it is necessary to drain the oil, remove the water pump, clutch slave cylinder, gear change linkage, engine sprocket casing and the sprocket itself. Right, okay, so... Uh, 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 um, Water pump, blah de blah de blah. Sealed unit, can't be serviced. <laughs> right, okay, so the water pump lives down here. Essentially, it's a case of take that off. Where's my thing? Where's my ratchet gone? Oh, don't say I've lost that. <laughs> So that's the water pump out. Along with dead spiders. <laughs> Everything is literally going into these plastic bags. Yes, we are recording. Yeah, so everything is going into these plastic bags. Just 
literally as complete an assembly as I can get. <coughs> and I'm taking pictures at each stage, just so I don't, you know, lose track of anything basically. I know I probably don't need to, but it's just, I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it, if that makes sense. Uh, there we go. Right. All right, so that's the water pump out. Um, 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 um. Stick that retaining bolt in there as well. It's just silly things really. So like the um, the push rod for the clutch goes in that hole, but it's got these, you know, it's got a cut out there. It's a bit thinner there and it has to go in a certain way. So I'm just taking pictures of everything basically. And it's all getting laid out on the bench in the order that I took it off as well. Right, so he's done. So what was next? Note also that it is only necessary to remove the clutch if the gearbox input shaft is to be dismantled, otherwise it can be left in position. Right, so the clutch is probably coming out as well. this is spinning I really haven't got any way of holding it still so block of alley it can go in there This is the dished um, front sprocket I was talking about. Uh, where are you? There you go, so you can see it's dished. It's not a flat one. Um, apparently on the D gear box, this is flat. I had it the other way around. Um, the output shaft is longer on the D, so you have to run the D front sprocket, which is just a normal flat sprocket. Um, but on the C it is dished. He's all right. There's lots of goo, isn't there? All right. All this lot is going to have to get cleaned up. Right, so the cradle is just in the way. So he's going. <laughs> um, apart from that, it kind of overhangs the covers that I want to split anyway, so it probably have to go at some point. So he's just leaving now. Uh, put that bolt there. Are you just gonna come off? Come on. Come off. There we go. All right, that's a bit easier. It's just in the way. All right, that can all stay there. Um, do I get those out? Actually, probably don't need to come off those mounts. There's a bolt that goes through here that goes onto the, the, the basically I'm trying to split it here. There's a split now, actually, I'll get a picture. I will show you. Um, come on. Why don't you recognise me face anymore? 
So, there's a split line here, middle of this casing, goes all the way along, but all the securing bolts for the, the engine mount is on this side, not this side, so I shouldn't need to take them off. But it just gets the cradle out of the way so I can see what the hell I'm doing. Right, I think the next bit is the gear change mechanism cover, it says, which I'm assuming is that bit. Because that's the gear change mechanism, and that's the bit that's covering it. Um, and it just says in here, remove the securing bolts. So, right, let's um, have a look for them. Um, 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 well, you're obviously one, aren't you? this with gloves on but um, I'm getting my tablet covered in goo and if I do she'll kill me because that was a Christmas present <laughs> um, but I just I want to keep taking pictures and stuff so that's happening the other thing is uh, the sound is now probably rubbish because the the phone battery died so you're now plugged in on charge but that's the same point that I plugged the microphone into so if the sound is junk, I'm sorry, but if you want to see it, you're going to have to put up with it. Right, disengage the gear shaft from the selector drum, pull the shaft out of the crankcase. Uh, remove the nuts and shoulder, yeah, yeah, yeah. it'll get to that bit in a minute. So, gear change, oh, there's a washer on there. Um, where's my cable ties, just so nothing goes astray. I just want to make sure that everything goes back in the same order, so. Let's see. So, how does it disengage that then? God, he's only just poking through. Right, so you, you move this with the, the lever, he just pushes on those pins up and down. So, disengage it, I'm guessing it's that. I'm guessing. Come on. You've got to come off. Don't be stupid. It has to be that. Oh, hang on, he goes down now. <laughs> Is that all it was? Oh, well, I'll probably spam it something then. Right, so he can come down. And he can come out. Right, well, okay, maybe it won't work then. Yeah. Alright, well I might have got my first bit wrong. <clears throat> um, remove the nuts and shoulder washers which retain the neutral and gear position detent arms and remove the arms along with their return springs. Note that although the detent arms are identical, the return springs are different and cannot be interchanged. So apparently on the C model, the gear position lower arm spring is yellow 
and the neutral upper arm spring is white. Now I'm white, where's the blue one? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so these are the detents with a string. I like it, yeah. Right, okay. Maybe I didn't need to take that off then. Well, it is loose. But that, um, the gear change thing was a bit he, he was a bit tight, so that knot doesn't, you know, the, the, there is a bit where it sits quite happily. So I should be able to do him back up again in the same place. It feels like it's keyed. Right, there's a set position because there is this cutout on it, and I don't know what the cutout does. Maybe that's neutral or something, I don't know. Um, right, let's, what size are you? Bigger than that, what's that? Eight. Eight. Nine. Oh, actually, let's get a picture of this. the nuts and shouldered washers retaining the neutral gear possession detent arms. Oh right yeah shouldered washer nut So the spring just goes against the casing. So they should just wiggle off then. Like that. And then that's the spring. And that spring's just up against the casing as well. Just wiggle off, which it does, and then there's a spring. This is why the Haynes book of fairy tales is rubbish. Because it doesn't cover everything. Well, it's so ambiguous, and easy to get confused. So it's talking about removing all this. Um, so there's a retaining plate here, which needs to come out, and then you're supposed to be able to pull out the selector port. Well, I can't even, I can see them down there, and I can see them moving the gears in and out as I rotate the selector drum. I can't get to it, so I think the oil pump housing's got to come off. Did it say anything earlier about removing the oil pump housing? I don't know. I can't see. But I reckon this has all got to come off, just because it's in the way. There we go. I'm taking it off anyway because it looks like it just bolts straight on from this side and it engages on a gear on the gear train itself. 
Um, Oil pump housing. I'm not taking the upper crankcase components off. Lower crankcase. It just starts off with remove the bolt switch to lure the selector drum retaining plate to the side of the casing and remove the plate. Withdraw the selector fork shaft from the lower crankcase and lift out the selector forks. Where the bloody hell are we supposed to lift them out? You can't even get to it. Well, that needs to go. That needs to go, I'm sure of it. Um, so let's start with the obvious ones. Another oily one. That one, that one, and that one are still in. It is first necessary to ensure the projections on the shaft of the pump are vertical. What? Projections on the shaft of the pump. Projections on the shaft of the pump, which I can't see. There's a drive gear down here, which drives the pump. I can see it. Oh, actually, that, maybe that's a projection. Right, I need to turn the engine, which basically means this cover's got to come off. Then get something on the crank and do it that way. Bloody hell. I'm definitely going to have to get myself some more gaskets. <laughs> I'm going to need a few. see stuff. This is what I wanted to see. It looks horribly complicated. <laughs> right, that's a little jet. Oh, right. I still can't see projections on, what did it say? Projections on the what? Um, To allow the oil pump and mounting bracket assembly to be removed from the engine, it is first necessary to ensure the projections on the shaft of the pump are vertical. 
projections on the shaft of the pump. All right. <laughs> Right, so this goes in, this goes in that way, in there, and there's these projections on the shaft there, I'm guessing that's what it means. There's like a, like a vertical jobby, so just by turning the engine over you can turn the crank. 